Hi. I'm here to show you how to name and write formulas for mixed problems like you see in the back of this worksheet. <laughs> Yay. And to do it, you're probably going to want to have these rules here. The top one is writing formulas. The bottom one is naming. It's kind of a set of um, things you should do when you want to write formulas and names. So if we look on the left-hand side for writing formulas, um, you want to just kind of follow the rules. So if, it's, if there's prefixes, you should do what they say. Don't crisscross. And if there's no prefixes, you should crisscross. And so like something like this, carbon dioxide, see the prefix is there, means I'm not going to think about it too much. I'm just going to write one carbon and two oxygens. Don't crisscross do anything crazy. Okay. Next one is potassium cyanide. So no prefixes there. So I should be crisscrossing. And it's not an acid. Okay. There's no, the word acid is not there. Potassium is not a transition metal. So none of these bottom rules apply. I'm just going to crisscross kind of simply. So I'll do it right over here. Potassium is K plus one. Cyanide is on the back of your polyatomic ion list, and it's Cn minus 1. And you look them both up, crisscross them. In this case, they both cancel each other out, so you get KCn. Uh, on to the next one, selenium disulfide. Well, I see a di there, so that's a prefix. So I should do what the prefixes say, and don't crisscross. SeS2. Let's see. Let's skip to some other ones just to give you a hang of it. Something like this, nitrous acid. Um, I do see the word acid, so when I'm going to write its formula, it has to have an H in it. So H is plus one. And then nitrous, OUS, to read the rules backwards for acid. So you would say um, if it was OUS, or sorry, if it is OUS, then it was ITE. So I'm looking for nitrite, and nitrite's on the back of your polyatomic ion list. It's NO2, it's got a minus one charge, and they just cancel each other out, so you get HNO2. Okay. If it has a Roman numeral, like number eight, you just do what it says. So there's no prefixes there in number eight. You just crisscross, and then the one is the charge on the copper in this example. Here, it's a two, so that's the charge on copper. You want to use that to crisscross. So Cu plus two, and phosphate is PO4 minus three. This is found on the back of your polyatomic ion list. And you crisscross them to get Cu2 PO, sorry, Cu3 PO4 two. So there's a few examples on how to write formulas um, using this, these three rules. I hope so. Um, when you're naming, there's kind of more rules, and they're kind of listed here. Um, you know, if the first element's a metal, um, then it could be a um, acid, which is case four if it has a hydrogen in it. If it's a transition metal, you're going to use Roman numerals. If it's not. You don't use Roman numerals. That's the first thing that we learned the first time we did this. And then if the first element's a non-metal, then you just use prefixes. So those are kind of all the cases that are listed here, one, two, three, and four. And you can refer back to these examples as well if you've got questions on them. So we'll look at a couple and kind of go through it. Um, so let's start here, 27. 27 is BRF3. So really when you do these, it's about the first element. Is that first element a metal? or a non-metal. And the first element is bromine, which is a non-metal. So I should use prefixes to name it. So one bromine, but it's by it's the first one, so you don't use mono, so it's bromine. And then three fluorines would be trifluoride. Okay, next one is LiC2O4. So first element is a metal. It is not hydrogen. It's not a transition metal, right? Lithium is in the upper left-hand corner. So I'm going to use, not use Roman numerals, and treat it as a case two. Okay, so I name the first, which is lithium. And then I look up this one, C2O4. C2O4 is not, there's no box for the periodic table. So you look it up, and it's oxalate. And if it's on the back of your polyatomic ion list, then you just give it that name, and that's it. Um, in 29, I've got, here I've got an iron and I've got a phosphate, so let's figure out what I should do there. Um, for naming them, the first element is a metal, but it's not hydrogen, but iron. Well, iron is a transition metal. It's in the middle of the periodic table, so I'm going to use these rules, and I'm going to need Roman numerals when I do this, so it's a case three. So if you wrote iron and this is phosphate, that would be a good start. Except you're going to need Roman numerals like the flow chart says here. Okay, so we have to figure out what the charge on iron is. So I, again, I've been mentally kind of cutting them in half. Phosphate is minus three. You can look that up. 
and there are two of them, that equals minus six. Okay, the whole thing has to be neutral, so this side is plus six, but I've got three irons to get me up to plus six. So if you have a number there, you have to take this six and divide it by three to find out what each iron is worth. In this case, each iron is worth two because six divided by three is two. Let's see, we can find a couple other examples, maybe an acid, like number 40, I guess, is a good example of an acid. Has an H in front, which is, you know, on the metallic side. It is an H, so I use the acid rules for naming, which is case four. So, um, you know, for case four, it's sometimes nice to write out the old name, which would be hydrogen nitrate, because this is nitrate on the back of your periodic table. But you gotta convert it into a acid name. So you're gonna take that ATE. Remember the rule for eight is that it becomes ick. So this becomes, instead of nitrate, it becomes nitric acid. And this is just kind of your work to get there. I think that covers just about everything with those four examples, okay? So continue to use these rules to name and write formulas when they're mixed up. That hopefully gives you a helpful tip on the way to do it. Anything you guys want to add? Um, they can't hear you. Good luck on the test. Good luck on the test, says Shelly. It's really hard. It's really hard because she she's taking it. it for some reason. Okay, bye.